All right. Ready? Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Ask the Doctor. Last time around, I told you that I wanted to talk about CO2 in this go round because we've been getting a lot of questions and I kind of wanted to start talking um, about some of those questions. So today we're talking about CO2. Um, you see, I'm standing in front of a whiteboard and the reason for that is that it's very difficult to do this without some illustration. So you're gonna get to witness my terrible drawing skills today. Lucky you. All right, so the first question today, um, let me contextualize this for you real quick. So this is about indoor growing, right? So anytime we grow indoors, grow in a greenhouse, grow in a warehouse, grow anywhere, um, we have uh, CO2 problems. Inevitably, if you're not dumping CO2, carbon dioxide, into the atmosphere, then the plants are consuming it all very quickly and you have really slow growth or growth problems. So um, this is like one of the most overlooked things when it comes to indoor growing. So that's one of the reasons why I really want to talk about it today. It's easy to manipulate and the results you can get by manipulating it are huge. So the first question today is, um, hey, Dr. Nate, I've heard that plants eat CO2 and it is like their food. So hypothetically, if I gave my plants more CO2, uh, would I get bigger plants? Is that how it even works? So that's a good question. And let's start right down at the basics. CO2 is carbon dioxide. It's one carbon uh, atom with two oxygen uh, atoms attached to it. And plants take carbon dioxide and they fix it. And you've heard me talk about fixing things before. But plants take in the CO2 and they will actually, through this little biochemical process, um, split the oxygen off of there, take the, the carbon off of that molecule, and it will add hydrogen ions to it and make sugar out of it. Okay? So um, that's like the most simple explanation of how CO2 is used in the plant. That sugar is then used to build all sorts of crazy things all over the plant. Um, it's energy, it's also structural material, you name it. Uh, it takes that carbon and uses it in the plant. So, um, today I'm going to talk real quick about CO2 and how the plants use it. So, they don't eat CO2, right? CO2 is, well, I guess it's kind of a plant nutrient in some ways in that they need it to survive. But at the same time, um, you know, it's, it, they, they're not taking it up in solution. They're actually uh, taking CO2 in through their leaves. So if you look at a plant leaf, if, if you look at it under a microscope, you'll see that the top of the leaf of the plant leaf is um, terrible drawing here, but you get the idea. So this is the top of the leaf. And the top of the leaf usually doesn't have um, any kind of stomatal structures on it, okay? And stomatal structures are just little teeny tiny little bitty dots that you can probably only see with a microscope. But if you turn that leaf over and if you look on the underside, what you see is a bunch of little openings in the plant leaves. Now the plants can open and close these openings and they do it primarily to let CO2 in to the leaf and to let oxygen out. Because the inside of the leaf, if we did a cross section of it, it's not solid. Like you kind of have a little solid thing of cells here and then you have like kind of these openings, right? In the bottoms of the leaves. And they uh, open through uh, stomates down there in the bottom of the leaf. So as the plant is working, as light is hitting the leaf, it's taking that light and it's using it to split water. So it takes water and it does this incredible thing. It snaps the oxygen off, it snaps the hydrogen off, and it produces O2, right? The stuff that we uh, love to breathe. And um, so it's producing O2 in the plant and um, it needs to get rid of it somehow. At the same time, it needs to let CO2 into the plant. So what happens is all of this O2 kind of shoots out through these little stomatal pores, right? Because it's building up in the leaf and it lets the carbon dioxide in. Well, at the same time, you're losing water, right? So all the water in the plant leaf just kind of um, pours out into the atmosphere, especially when it's pretty dry. In human atmospheres, it's not as much of a problem. But when it's dry, that water, basically, you lose it from your plant tissue. Man, this is a really ugly drawing. My wife is an artist and she would be ashamed of me right now. I'm not going to let her watch this episode. So um, you're losing water, but you're also letting uh, CO2 into the plant for the plant to use. So the thing is, is you know, um, if you have increased levels of CO2, what it means if there's two times this, then CO2 goes in a lot faster, right? So you lose less water and um, you, know, you can basically restore CO2 levels in the leaf much quicker. 
So what it means is a lot of the time um, you have better growth and faster growth. That's all there is to it. Not just because you've got more carbon to work with. More carbon is a good thing because the plant, you know, it's easier for the plant to fix that carbon. But um, it also means you're losing less water, you're maintaining better water weight in the plant, all these other great things. Say, so it's, it's kind of complicated, but I hope that kind of stews it down and makes it somewhat simple for you. The plant is opening these little gateways and CO2 is rushing in and oxygen is rushing out along with water. So the, the least amount of time the plant can leave those open, the better. And um, what it means is that you just have healthier plants, you got better growth overall. So um, I think that kind of, uh, kind of answers that question. Uh, the plants are not eating the CO2, but they are using it, they are fixing it, and you can get better, bigger, faster plants when you supplement CO2. If you don't have enough CO2, the plant will just simply stop growing. That's all there is to it. There's no carbon for it to fix. So that can be a big problem in enclosed environments. So the second question is, greeting doctors, Nate, in your last video you mentioned that you can manipulate CO2 to get what you want out of your growing environment. Could you elaborate on that, please? That's from Archie. So um, he wanted to kind of understand how we can take CO2 and, um, and by either raising or lowering CO2, getting certain things from our environment. So um, what I'm typically talking about here is managing humidity, all right? So if you guys remember, back to uh, the last question, I talked about those stomatopores in the bottom of those leaves opening up and dumping oxygen and dumping uh, water into the atmosphere around those plants, right? So the plants are getting rid of oxygen and they are also losing water. Well, if we raise our um, CO2 levels up and those pores open less often and stay open less often, our humidity will drop. Okay, so we can actually lower humidity because most of the humidity in the environment is coming from the plants themselves. So CO2 can be a great tool for managing humidity in your environment. Why is that important? Humidity is an issue with diseases, all sorts of other things. So um, tied to that, on the same disease question, I know that there were some questions about using CO2 to limit disease issues. In the last, um, in the last. Uh, question or, or ask the doc episode, I mentioned very briefly using CO2 to manage diseases. Well, it also turns out that a lot of fungal pathogens infect the plant through this, through this stomata, okay? So the, uh, the uh, fungal hypha, hyphae will move across the leaf and it will find this opening in the plant. And instead of trying to like, you know, drill through the plant leaf to get into it, it will just find one of these openings and go through. Well, if you are operating in an environment with low CO2 where those have to stay open more often, um, or the plant, you know, there are other conditions, of course, that influence this, but the more we can keep those pores closed, the less likely we are to, um, it doesn't mean we're going to eliminate some of those diseases, but it means we can slow them down and slow down the rate of infection. So CO2, um, I'm just going to touch on those things right now real quick. If you want to know more about this, I'm going to do an entire lesson on this at Upstart University at some point in the near future. So I'll go into a lot more detail than I can in an Ask the Doc. But um, so that kind of just touches on uh, some of those basics there for you know controlling your environment, controlling disease, using CO2 as a tool, not as just an input. So um, think about that. And if, again, if you have more questions, make sure you sign up for the USU course on CO2. That should be coming up here in the next six to eight weeks. All right, thanks so much for joining us today uh, for this episode of Ask the Doctor. Again, if you have more questions about CO2, make sure you're checking out Upstart University. It's kind of an educational platform that we're building out where I spend literally hours talking about these types of things in the kind of detail that you need if you're gonna be serious about growing. So make sure you check that out. The goal there is to build community around it and get a lot of people talking about these things and working on all these problems together. Thanks so much for watching Ask the Doc. And we really appreciate it. Remember, if you have any questions for us, post them using the form below.